In this week's Weekly Funny Jokes, we bring you our best joke compilation of the week. These jokes are sure to make you laugh, from the first one to the last one. This week, we bring you five jokes, starting with a joke about a fortune teller until we end with the best beach blooper ever. So, sit back, get the popcorn, and get ready to laugh until your stomach ache. Break it down. Today, we bring you the best fortune teller joke ever. So, hold on tight, folks. This joke is like a wild roller coaster ride through time and giggles. But before we dive into the belly laughs, let's take a quick detour through the smoky lanes of history. Abacomancy, or as the cool kids call it, a mathomancy, is like reading the universe's version of tea leaves, but with dirt, sand, or ashes. Imagine a group of people staring intently at a pile of dirt, like it holds the secrets of the universe, because apparently it might. They drop this stuff on a table and play connect the dots with the patterns, hoping they'll find the cheat codes to life. Some even go full detective, searching for the same symbols over and over like they're in a cosmic game of Where's Waldo? And get this, Jackson Pollock, the guy famous for his wild paint splatters, apparently thought he was Picasso with dirt. He painted like he was predicting the future through abstract mud wrestling matches. Classic tellers move, if you ask me. So, there's this poor fella with a giant dilemma, and he's thinking, who do I turn to for some supernatural wisdom? Yep, you guessed it. Off to the fortune teller he goes. He's airing out all his dirty laundry, telling the fortune teller how he's got this nagging suspicion, all worried about his wife's alleged shenanigans while he's slaving away at work. He's practically begging for answers, wanting the mystic guru to peek into her crystal ball and tell him whether his marriage is about to crash into heartbreak or fly into happy endings. After listening to the man's sad story, the fortune teller shook her crystal ball vigorously. I'm sorry, she said, but I need more details to see through this dusty mess. It's like trying to watch Netflix with bad Wi-Fi. You need to bring some soil from your front yard. The closer to the front door the soil, the more accurately the reading will be. Confused but hopeful, the man agreed. Sure, he said, I'll bring the dirt. Who knew my front yard could hold the secrets of a soap opera? Maybe my flowers are plotting against me. With a mix of anticipation and disbelief, he left, wondering if he'd accidentally stumbled into a gardening consultation. As she is very busy, she asks him to be punctual for their next appointment, as it might be a long session. Bursting into the fortune teller's reception like he's auditioning for the next Olympics, the man skids to a halt, clutching a bag of soil like it's the last donut at a buffet. Phew, I almost missed my date with the crystal ball. And this bag of dirt, he said. The receptionist raises an eyebrow, wondering if this is a psychic reading or a gardening consultation. So, the fortune teller sat the man down and took the bag of soil from him. With a flourish, the fortune teller spreads the soil across her table, massaging it like it's the world's weirdest stress ball. The man watches, equal parts intrigued and baffled, wondering if this is a gardening tutorial gone awry. As she finishes, she wipes the table clean like she's just had a close encounter with a supernatural mud pie. Turning to the man, she proclaims, Behold, the sacred soil ritual with a success rate that puts weather forecasts to shame. The man blinks, realizing he's about to receive life-changing news from a glorified mud whisperer. Sir, she said, I have some very bad news for you. I need to know if you are ready for this, as it might be a great shock to you. The guy said to the fortune teller, absolutely, I need to get this over with so that I can go on with my life. The fortune teller takes a deep breath before dropping bombshells, like she's playing psychic bingo. Sir, she begins, brace yourself. Your kids, not yours, 
your daughter, playing house with a married man, and oh, your wife, pregnant by your dearly younger brother. She pauses, then adds, blame it on the soil, not the reader. But I am truly sorry. The gentleman laughed uncontrollably to the amazement of the fortune teller. When he finished laughing, the fortune teller asked, now what can be so funny, sir? The man launches into his tale of woe like he's auditioning for a sitcom. You wouldn't believe it, he starts. I had a day straight out of a horror movie. Traffic jams, spilled coffee, the works. And just when I'm at your doorstep, it hits me. The soil sample. So, I pull a MacGyver move and snatch some dirt. From your front yard. <laughs>
The room fell silent, hanging on the punchline. With a mischievous grin, the husband delivered the final blow. She looked me dead in the eye and said, Well, darling, this is your first time. wonder what surgeons talk about when they're not knee-deep in surgery? Well, picture this. A group of surgeons gathered around the break room table, trading jokes and jabs about their favorite types of patients. From meticulously numbered accountants to alphabetically arranged librarians and color-coded electricians, each surgeon makes a case for why their profession reigns supreme on the operating table. But when heartless lawyers and savvy engineers enter the conversation, it's comedy gold. Get ready for a surgical showdown where laughter is the best anesthesia. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, around 3000 BC, surgeons were more than just craftsmen. They were the original body magicians. Picture this. While the rest of the world was still figuring out how to start a fire, these Egyptian surgeons were immobilizing fractures, slicing out tumors, and stitching up wounds with all the finesse of a modern-day seamstress, using linen thread, no less. But hold on to your pharaoh hats because the real plot twist comes with the mummies. That's right, those wrapped-up relics of the past were more than just spooky decorations for horror movies. They were textbooks for these ancient surgeons. You see, while everyone else was busy burying their dead and calling it a day, the Egyptians were turning death into a science. By meticulously mummifying bodies, they weren't just preserving the past, they were dissecting the secrets of human anatomy like the world's first medical detectives. With every incision, they gained insights into the inner workings of the human body, improving their diagnosis and treatment of the living in ways that would make even Dr. Frankenstein jealous. So, next time you're at the museum, gazing upon those ancient relics, just remember, those mummies aren't just spooky spectacles. They're the OG textbooks that taught ancient surgeons everything they needed to know about saving lives. Who knew that unraveling the mysteries of the dead could lead to such life-saving revelations? It's enough to make even the most skeptical archeologists say, now that's what I call a mummy makeover. All right. Scrub in and get ready, because we're about to dissect some serious humor. The first surgeon leans forward and declares, Accountants, my friends, are the absolute best to operate on. Why? Because when you open them up, everything on the inside is numbered. It's like performing surgery in a perfectly organized spreadsheet. The second surgeon chuckles and counters, You haven't seen anything until you've operated on a librarian. Everything inside them is meticulously arranged in alphabetical order. It's like navigating a well-indexed library in there. Not to be outdone, the third surgeon chimes in. Ah, but have you ever worked on an electrician? Now, there's a treat. Everything inside them is color-coded, like working with a rainbow of wires. It's almost too easy. The fourth surgeon, with a mischievous grin, adds his opinion. I beg to differ. Lawyers are the most fascinating patients. They're heartless, spineless, gutless, and their heads and butts are completely interchangeable. He pauses for effect before continuing. Plus, operating on them is great practice for arguing a case in court. As the group shares a laugh, the fifth surgeon, who has been quietly listening to the conversation, finally speaks up. Well, gentlemen, he begins, while all those choices certainly have their merits, I have to say I prefer engineers. You see, they always understand when you have a few parts left over at the end. It's like they anticipate the need for spare parts. <laughs> the room erupts in laughter as they all agree that regardless of the profession, each type of patient presents its own unique challenges and rewards in the operating room. Moral of the story is this. Remember, in the operating theater of life, each profession brings its own quirks and challenges. Whether you're stitching up a lawyer's interchangeable parts or puzzling over an engineer's extra pieces, 
Just know that in the end, it's all part of the procedure. So keep your sense of humor intact, because when it comes to surgery or any other adventure, those spare parts might just come in handy. <laughs>
Imagine it as a water park slide for molecules, but instead of kids, it's water molecules sliding through the layers of your skin like they own the place. So, when you're soaking for ages, those keratin cells and sebum decide to throw a pool party and soak up all that water, causing your skin to puff up and wrinkle like a forgotten laundry pile. But wait, there's more. Cue the entrance of the sympathetic nervous system, the control freak of your sweat glands. When your hands and feet start resembling prunes, it's not just because they're having a spa day gone wrong. It's your nerves pulling off a sneaky maneuver. Picture this. Water sneaks into those tiny sweat ducts like uninvited guests crashing a party, and your nerves go into full-on panic mode. Shutting down and boom. Vasoconstriction happens. Translation. Your blood vessels throw on their tightest corset, squeezing your fingers and toes into little wrinkles. So. There you have it, folks. The next time you're chilling in the tub and your fingers start looking like they've aged a century, just remember, it's all thanks to osmosis and your nervous system trying to keep your digits on their toes. Or, should I say, wrinkly. Let's jump to the joke. So, this poor guy at the beach, minding his own business, when suddenly, Mother Nature decides to play a prank on him. The waves turn into mischievous little monsters and snatch his swim trunks away. Now he's stuck in the water, desperately trying to preserve his dignity in front of a beach full of spectators. He's doing the awkward water dance, pretending to be a deep sea explorer, while secretly praying for everyone to magically vanish. Hours pass, and he's still there, turning into a raisin and wondering if he'll ever feel warmth again. Finally, with the setting sun, he sees his chance. There's only one person left on the beach, a woman. He figures it's now or never, but just as he's about to make his daring escape, fate intervenes in the form of a drifting sand bucket. Talk about a well-timed distraction. With the determination of a soldier heading into battle, he makes his move, using a conveniently drifting sand bucket as his shield of modesty. But just as he starts to relax, thinking he's pulled off the greatest escape since Houdini, he decides to strike up a conversation with the woman. Now, here's where it gets juicy. Turns out, she's not just any beach bum. She's a psychologist on a mission, observing the last remaining beach dwellers like a seagull eyeing a long-lost french fry. Our hero, feeling bold, decides to put her skills to the test and asks her to read his mind. With a twinkle in her eye, she looks him up and down then glances at the trusty Sen Bucket and delivers the punchline of the century. I think you thought that the Sen Bucket has a bottom part. <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>